of Rob. Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Rogues. And it's been a little while since I've uh, been on video and even put up a video for a little bit. I've had some computer problems and issues and I think I may have to reformat my computer. Uh, so uh, it's uh, the computer's old and needs replaced. Uh, I've had to create a different user login to get into the computer just because system files are crashing and it's just it's being a pain in the butt. So people that have had computer problems can relate. So that's why I've been kind of MIA uh, for almost a week, I'm probably almost two by the time I uh, am shooting this. That um, you'll you'll have that from time to time. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to use this camera, or use my old one, then use my wife's computer. It's it's a whole thing, but that's not why you clicked here. You're hopefully clicked here for the uh, continuing part three of the Robin R.I.P. series that I'm doing. As I really wasn't sure what I was going to call it then, but this is the events that came out of Batman Incorporated eight. And we all know that as the death of Damian Wayne, Robin. So as much as I hated uh, Damian when he first came in, I grew to love Damian as a character. I like the idea of Batman and Robin being father and son, then Grant Morrison uh, kills him off. So uh, this is the uh, continuing uh, story of Bruce Wayne's journey through the uh, death and loss of his son, uh, Damian Wayne. Uh, this is part three, if I have already said that. I think since I did this uh, motion three, I realized, hey, I already did that once and I couldn't see my fingers do a three because, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I decided to change up the wardrobe a little bit. Normally I've been wearing a Robin shirt for these RIP things and I've been wearing the Damien uh, Robin shirt as much as I can, getting as much mileage out of it. But I found this at my local Walmart. A little quick review for this is the new 52 Batman t-shirt. And there's my utility belt there. So I uh, got it for $7.50 at uh, Walmart. I had to drive to our capital city of Columbus, Ohio to uh, track it down. So uh, and that was fun to be able to check it out. And I continue to check out my Walmart, which is 15 minutes away. They still don't have it, so yeah, there you go. But enough rambling. Let's get into the uh, Robin uh, section of this video. And uh, I know these... Uh, two issues of Batman and, um, and they have dropped the Robin name because Damien's not around. So it's going to be Batman and his supporting characters. We saw in the last Robin R.I.P. was the uh, Requiem issues of uh, each of the uh, Batman related titles that kind of played in part of the Requiem uh, for Damien. But this is the actual physical story is continuing in Batman and Robin. And some people have wondered why uh, Scott Snyder is uh, basically taking a year out, a year off out of current continuity in the New 52, and I believe I, I wish I could find the article that I read this on, but he was saying that Tomasi is going to be handling the events from Damien's death and Batman and Robin, so he wanted to do something else. And I think with him creating Harper Rowe, he didn't want to continue doing whatever he was doing with her, kind of let other people play with Harper Rowe. Him basically taking a year off, and when he comes back, uh, Batman will probably have a new Robin, and he can hop right into current continuity and everything that's going on. So it'll be interesting, but enough of that. The uh, two issues that we'll be looking at today are Batman and Red Robin and Batman and Red Hood. And uh, these five issues that we'll be eventually looking at, they come out once a month. I think I may wait another two months, uh, possibly. I know Bat or Batman and uh, Batgirl is coming out this next week. But with it being the Man of Steel week, I might do some Man of Steel type stuff. That's for you, Stu. Um, I do have a Superman and uh, Bat or Superman and <laughs> Superman and Robin comic book I'd like to review as well. But uh, this is going to be dealing with the five stages of grief, and um, you will go through all the stages. The first stage of grief, if I could find the uh, title in here, that is going to be denial. Is usually the first stage of grief that you you can't believe what is going on, and you're not you just you're in denial. It's you can't believe it's happened. No, I just I saw this person yesterday, and uh, before we get into the comic itself, it's it's interesting to read this as much as I love the idea 
of Batman having a son and uh, him being Robin. Looking at it now, it's it's a little odd to be able to do that. Reading the comics, that you know, that's always going to be in the back of your mind. That I've talked to people that have lost a child, and I can't even wrap my mind around you. Know, my wife and I don't have any kids yet, but I pray that we would never have to deal with the loss of a child. Um, that is something they say, you know, you never get over. It's it's one thing if they're in the later part of their life and a parent is never supposed to outlive their children. But uh, when you lose somebody at a very, very young age, all those things just set into motion, you know, the life this person could have had, was there something I could have done to prevent whatever it is. If it's a disease or something like that, you can kind of wrap your mind around it somehow, but when it's a senseless act that's, you know, death, murder, car accident, just a random event, that is something that's sometimes very, very hard to uh, overcome that loss, and especially in uh, married couples, that sometimes the death of a child is a thing that tears that that marriage apart. One spouse usually blames the other one. So I don't want to get into a whole, you know, sad thing here, but these are the things that I'm thinking about as I'm reading uh, these couple of issues. And then when you put it into comic book, you know, terminology, you know, the links that Batman has these wealth of resources, what he wouldn't do to try and save his son. And a lot of us Batman fans out there would say the very first thing I would do was take the body of Damien and run to the Lazarus pit to Rachel Gould and say, you owe me, you know, your daughter's uh, crazy psycho pants and, uh, or a bat shit crazy, I guess I can say this. If I say the S word, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll try and bleep that out. But uh, I think it fit with the uh, book theme. Anyway, um, it's a, you know, your daughter's crazy. Uh, she just killed your grandson. Let's bring him back. So there's a whole, you know, he could be crazy when it comes out. But Damien was already kind of a little, you know, nutty. So um, the first issue, uh, depending on how I'm shooting this, I may pause the camera right here and try to go to an audio track and let you kind of see some things. So uh, we'll be back in just a second. Hold on. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to see this part or not, or if I'm going to do just an audio overdub, or if I'm just going to blend these two together. Who knows? But uh, the issue I'm going to hold up for the camera's purpose so I can see what I'm doing uh, this was also the Gatefold 19 issue of uh, the DC. Uh, most of the DC books were up to issue 19. There were a few that were there. But this was their W2, WTF, the What the Fudge Sickle uh, little gimmick that they were doing on all these. And the Pull Out, which is no spoiler anymore. But if you haven't seen this, spoiler alert, is you know Carrie Kelly being introduced into the new 52 and it says, is, you know, the Dark Knight's, uh, is the Dark Knight's new partner, Carrie Kelly, question uh, mark. The issue opens up with us seeing Carrie Kelly uh, driving in a car, eating a piece of pizza, and somebody, you know, trying to hit on her. And uh, it's just kind of a day in her life. She's going to a costume party. And we see in a note that uh, the sessions that uh, Carrie Kelly was having with Damien uh, was a thousand dollars, and it's written with CK. And a lot of people, when we, they had first read this, thought it was Clark Kent. And it's like, why is Clark Kent giving lessons to Damien? Um, and why is it costing a thousand dollars? I didn't think Superman needed uh, money, but you know, hey. Um, and we see uh, Carrie Kelly in a Robin suit at a costume party, which is uh, why she ends up in a Robin suit uh, to begin with and it actually kind of fits her character in the new 52 wearing the traditional Dick Grayson Jason Todd you know little green shorts and uh, yellow cape um, Bruce is uh, goes to the door actually I think it's Alfred or excuse me it is Bruce <laughs> Bruce that goes to the door to uh, give uh, something back to uh, Carrie Kelly and it's the uh, we find out is the check later on in the issue for a thousand dollars 
and she's wanting to know where Damien is, and Bruce isn't telling her, basically leaves abruptly and heads off. Uh, the big part of the issue is Batman tracking down uh, Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, uh, that uh, Frankenstein is dead, but has been kind of put back together and brought to life, and uh, Bruce is basically kidnapping Frankenstein to find out what it is that is keeping him alive. He figures out, if I can figure out what is keeping Frankenstein alive, I'll be able to resurrect Damien. So he goes as far as to take apart uh, Frankenstein and uh, you know get ready to try to do some experiments. It's this time that uh, Alfred calls Tim and says, you know, uh, Bruce is really at a loss and has left abruptly and is headed to, I believe it's Antarctica, to where uh, Frankenstein is. And Tim heads off in the Titans jet, which in the Titans book it hasn't been made mention that Tim has a Titans jet, but apparently Tim has a Titans jet. And he's uh, sneaking in on uh, Batman to try and see what he's doing. And of course, Batman knows Tim is there the whole entire time. Uh, Bruce and Tim have uh, this heated discussion about, you know, what you're doing is wrong. And uh, Bruce actually ends up uh, punching Tim to the ground, as I'm kind of looking at the uh, comic here. Uh, Frankenstein is able to talk while being kind of dismembered in different places. And Bruce has him all hooked up and says, you know, the thing that brought him back, it, it was is not going to be the same thing that's going to bring back his son, that, you know, he's experienced loss too, and Bruce needs to try to find some way. This isn't the right thing to do. Uh, as Tim takes off in the jet, he turns the jet around and blows up the lab that was going to run the test on Frankenstein. Uh, there is a great, great picture. I will try and find it here as I'm uh, talking about this. I'm just again, again going to hold it up. I don't know if I'll get to the editing portion of this. But such a great image of uh, <laughs> Bruce being very, very ticked off with uh, Tim for having destroyed this lab that Tim was going to, or Tim, Bruce was going to try and do this experiment uh, on Frankenstein uh, to see what was keeping him alive. Uh, Bruce abruptly leaves. And uh, Tim is left with uh, pieces of Frankenstein to put back together. That is the rage issue, and it ends actually with Carrie Kelly dancing with one of her uh, roommates in her apartment, and we see a check for a thousand dollars, or actually for ten thousand dollars, excuse me, written uh, to Carrie from Bruce Wayne. So um, that was uh, that first issue of the five stages of grief from Batman. We'll pause the camera here and we will see how I did in editing. If not, then you're gonna get this funny little uh, video of me looking uh, down at my comics, so we'll be right back. And we're back, or we're still here depending on how I edit this thing. Um, that was uh, Batman and Red Robin 19 um, Denial. Um, I liked the issue. It wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, I was I really wanted a lot more Tim Drake, but with Carrie Kelly's presence, there are two stories going on. It's the thing that's going on with Carrie Kelly and her relationship that she had with Damien, which we'll find out in the next issue what that actually was. But uh, at this uh, particular time, it's just that she was giving him lessons of some type. And uh, that kind of threw me for a loop. So it kind of starts off with Carrie Kelly. Uh, Tim Drake really doesn't get the exposure that Jason Todd, Red Hood, does in the next issue of Batman and Red Hood, but I thought this was pretty good. Um, again, I think Tim Drake could have been utilized just actually a lot, a lot bit more. That's the a really good English word there. A lot bit more. That's what we're going to use. So if he could have been used a lot bit more, wow, poor grammar, Rob. But... Um, so it's, at least from this point, now that you know, I'm two issues in, I kind of have a little bit better understanding how they're going to do. You'll get the Carrie Kelly side than the other hero or um, former partner of Batman will come in and do that story. 
uh, with him. So the denial portion um, that I kind of uh, skimmed over with Frankenstein is that they're having their you know fight and uh, Batman basically kidnaps him and it takes him away back to Frankenstein's you know layer that um, while Frankenstein's on the operating table, he says, you know, you, you need to let your son rest in peace and, you know, move on. And uh, Bruce is very determined. You know, this is my son. I'm going to do everything at all costs to bring him back. He was taken uh, too early from me. I think it's very reminiscent of Jason Todd. It's like, I've lost one. I don't, I, I don't want to lose another son, as it were, in this case, his real son. So that was a, a, a very, it was a very good issue. Um, I was kind of a little underwhelmed at first seeing the Red Robin banner on a book again in a DC Comics book makes me really, really want a Red Robin Tim Drake uh, comic. I'm hoping we get one at some point. Um, so I was really hoping to get this Batman and Red Robin interaction and we really don't. It's a few panels here and there and until that final little confrontation where uh, Bruce is just enraged um, at what Tim is saying to him. Sucker punches uh, Tim to the ground. Tim takes off and then blows up the lab of Frankenstein. Um, and Bruce is very, very uh, <laughs> distraught at Tim for ruining that part of uh, Bruce's plan, which... Uh, Bruce, a.k.a. Batman, seems a little, I wouldn't say evil. He's he's not in his right frame of mind. I like that Tomasi is writing him that way. This isn't the uh, calm, uh, cool Batman that we're used to. He's at his wit's end, and rightfully so. It's his son that has passed away. So that's going to wrap it up for that issue. And we are going to do this next one right here. This, which next is going to book we are looking at for today of the two books that we're looking at, is Batman and Red Hood number twenty. A very cool cover here by Mr. Pat uh, Gleason. Um, is Rage is the title of this? Uh, Shattered by Rage, and Rage is the second stage, Rage or Anger, um, in the five stages of uh, grief. Um, after denial has kind of set in or you've gotten through the denial phase once you realize that it's not acceptance, it's the, okay, this is real, this is actually really happening, that's when rage and anger take over and that's when the person completely loses it all the way around. They're mad at everything and everyone, even though that person is not necessarily anger is not directed at them that's the person they take it out on is because they are just so frustrated and who better to personify rage than jason todd aka red hood so that's what this issue is going to deal with and again we have the carrie kelly aspect that is going on in that part of the story so here we go again like the last issue we have like basically a two-parter we have the carrie kelly side of the um, issue, and then we have the uh, re this in this case the Red Hood Jason Todd portion. The Carrie Kelly part of the issue is her coming to the house, taking the uh, ten thousand dollar check back to Wayne Manor, and demanding to see Damien. She hasn't seen him in uh, quite a while, and he has never missed a lesson. And we find out that she's giving him acting lessons. Um, Bruce is down in the Bat Cave, kind of scanning some things, and Alfred opens the door. Uh, and calls Bruce up, and Bruce and Carrie have a conversation about Damien's acting, and Bruce is wondering, well, why was Damien wanting to act? And she says, well, because he wondered what it was like to become somebody else, which is kind of interesting, and Bruce actually says, you know, interesting. Um, she wants to give the money back and says, you know, she demands to see Damien, is holding a photo of Damien, and they kind of give a little flimsy excuse that Damien is abroad, you know, doing some studies, and, uh, you know, uh, Titus, their, Damien's dog, comes out, and Carrie obviously knows who Titus is and has said, you know, uh, who's taking care of Titus? And uh, Bruce said, well, Alfred can do that. And uh, Titus has a, you know, kind of a connection with Carrie. So uh, through a little bit of discussion, uh, Carrie has, is going to be walking and taking care of Titus while Damien 
is gone. <laughs> so uh, Carrie at this point still does not know that Damien is gone. And um, that is kind of their arrangement. She's going to kind of get paid uh, to be able to take care of Titus. And uh, probably have a little bit of uh, interaction with Alfred while Bruce is out doing his thing. Uh, the next part of the issue says later. And I'm curious of when this event takes place. Um, I'm assuming it takes place shortly after Death of the Family. Because in the issue of Red Hill the Outlaws, after Jason Todd got his face burnt from inside his mask, um, and he healed from it or got shocked or however it was, and he's, you know, okay again. Uh, he had been staying at Wayne Manor, so I'm assuming it's right after that he's getting ready to leave. Uh, Jason is down in the cave looking at a his Red Hood helmet that Damien stole one of his Red Hood helmets, and... Alfred and Jason are having a discussion of Damien and you know how Bruce is taking it and you know I know how Bruce was can only imagine how Bruce was when I was gone but now his with his son being gone he's probably taking things even harder and that is actually uh, the case uh, Bruce tracks down some people that were putting a bounty on Damien's head and asks Jason to go along with him to Ethiopia of all places so anybody that knows your Batman history knows why Ethiopia what Ethiopia holds a connection for Bruce and Jason both they go to Ethiopia take out their uh, the assassins that I believe they're part of the League of uh, Assassins from Talia and they do fighting McFightingstein on all of the uh, guards and Bruce wants to go track down uh, and Bruce is uh, in, very enraged by all this. I'm using the word enraged a lot. Um, and he's very brutally taking out uh, the guards. And Jason kind of notices that, that Bruce doesn't quite seem uh, right. They have their little bit of pleasantries back and forth. But at this time, Bruce and Jason have kind of patched everything up in a previous issue of Red Hood and the Outlaws. So they even make mention that uh, it's nice to be working together again. And that had me kind of wondering, wow, I wonder where this is going. Well, while they're in Ethiopia, Bruce takes Jason to the place where Jason died. Um, they were in Ethiopia when uh, death of the family took place, or death in the family, excuse me, death in the family took place where Jason was killed by the Joker. And... Jason says, of all the places on the whole entire earth, why would you bring me back here? And Bruce is trying to say, you know, I wanted to bring you back here to show you, you know, that I'm, I'm dealing with loss too. But Bruce is making it all about himself, and kind of rightfully so, but he's not seeing what it's doing to Jason. And Bruce turns on Jason, and they start fighting. And uh, Bruce is just asking Jason to hit him, hit him, hit him. And uh, Bruce is just totally losing it and is only thinking of himself and saying, you know, he and Bruce have gone so far on their journey together and have patched things up, and Bruce brings him right back to the worst time of his life and the worst place where Bruce let him down, let him die, and a rift is formed again between Jason and Bruce Wayne uh, to the point where Bruce actually ends up decking, or Jason ends up decking Bruce and ends up taking... Uh, the bat vehicle that they uh, drove in and Jason leaves Bruce in the desert. Not that Bruce is going to be able to find a way home, just like he did in The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, there you go. So that was the Rage issue. And the final panel in the Rage issue, we see a coin being flipped into a hand. So you know who that is. And up next in Batman and will be Batman and Batgirl. And it is going to be the bargain issue. We'll be right back. Batman and Red Hood. I surprisingly like this a little bit better than I liked uh, Batman and Red Robin. I think just because I was let down under the premise with the title of Batman and Red Robin. Uh, Jason got a lot more, uh, a, really a lot more pages uh, than Tim did in this series. Um, you can definitely tell the rage is set in to Bruce that he's 
going to go through this at all costs. And while, you know, Bruce is tracking down, he's just going out on these missions in a fit of rage, uh, tracking down members of a league of assassins and taking them out, beating the crap out of them. And, uh, you know, saying, you know, how dare you put a bounty on a 10 year old boy and just kind of given the, uh, guards and the assassins, a what for, uh, Jason could kind of see Bruce coming unraveled. I think that was a part that Jason looked at and go, wow, was was that how I was towards Bruce? Was I so enraged that I couldn't see top from bottom and bottom from top and left to right? Um, and it really started to bother Jason as they were in their uh, plane vehicle, their bats, uh, plane tank thing, their little transforming vehicle. Um, even to the point where Bruce and Jason have their confrontation with one another that Jason even makes mention, you know, we've already, we had just gotten past our issues and you're bringing them back up and you can't see from the loss of your own son, you know, what, what this is doing to me that you, you're willing to do anything at, at all costs to try and avenge uh, Damien's death and do anything at all costs, as I bought Naka with a little standover, uh, to do anything to bring Damien back, why weren't you that adamant for me? Why didn't you go the extra mile? And that's what really snaps or snaps or severs a tire, the straw that breaks the camel, camel? camel's back between Bruce and Jason again. And it really has ramifications in the most recent issue of... Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws 21, I believe, unless it's 20, um, I believe it's 20, is Jason goes to get his mind wiped as uh, I lose it again. <laughs> we'll just set this off to the side. He uh, goes to uh, the all cast, as it were, in his book and uh, gets his mind wiped that he has no memory of Bruce Wayne, Robin, Batman, who he is, who Arsenal and Starfire is in his own book, that the events from this book had such a big, big uh, effect on him that he he just can't take it. And I've kind of known uh, some people like that, and you may have too, where y there's that person in your life that is constantly like, why does everything bad happen to me? And, oh, I wish I could just, you know, erase everything from my past and could start over. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people end up doing something really drastic to try and make that happen. And in Jason's case, you know, it wasn't drugs or alcohol or suicide or anything like that. It, It's a mind wipe. Um, so that's an interesting take on the Jason Todd character up uh, right now in the Red Hood and the Outlaws book that uh, Tinian is writing, Tinian the Fourth, that uh, Roy and Corey are trying to get Jason his memory back, and Jason's like, I, I did this for a specific reason, and I'm happy there's a weight that's been lifted off my shoulders. So I'm kind of curious what they're going to do with Jason Todd and how Jason is going to interact with other Batman family members since he doesn't know who anybody is. So that was Batman and Red Hood. Uh, this coming week is going to be Batman and Batgirl, and the third stage of grief is going to be Bargain, where you're bargaining, you know, maybe with God or someone. I'll, I'll do anything to have such and such. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this uh, little series that I'm doing. Hopefully I get this editing thing figured out. Hopefully my computer doesn't give me more problems and I'm talking with my hands. So we're going to end the review here. Uh, thanks for watching. I've got a lot of your videos to review after almost two weeks of uh, not having a computer. So thanks for continuing to watch Rob's Rogues. We've got more videos and things coming, reviews, comic books, and I'm going to do some stuff for the Man of Steel uh, that's coming out next week. Finally, we get to see a new Superman movie. So, as always, this is Rob for Rob's Rogues signing off, saying we will see you guys next time.